So here we're interested in understanding the various possibilities for how a gas can change if, for example, we raise the temperature. So if we look at ideal gas, and the question is, as we raise the temperature, then the ideal gas law says the pressure times the volume can raise. But there's different ways this can happen. So let's look at the possibilities. Well, the simplest would be a freely moving piston. And so here, if temperature goes up, for example, we add the heat to the system. The temperature goes up, the volume goes up, the piston moves, and the pressure stays constant because we've constrained the system to a freely moving piston. So that's one possibility. Let's look at some other possibilities. Suppose we constrain the system by having stops here, so we're at constant volume. Again, we add heat. So the temperature is going to increase. The volume is fixed, but the pressure will increase because the ideal gas law, of course, tells us that. And the volume is constant. That's the second possibility. Let's look at a third possibility. Here, let's look at a piston and cylinder that's well insulated. And now what we're going to do is we're going to increase the pressure. We're going to push down. Let's say we did this reversibly, so we keep increasing the pressure. Well, we're doing work on the system, so that's going to increase the temperature, and the volume is going to decrease. So from the ideal gas law, pressure is going up, volume is going down. The product, of course, must go up to satisfy the ideal gas law. Well, there's one more way I can visualize this. So here, suppose we have an ideal gas with a piston that can move, but it's constrained by the springs. And so, for example, if the piston were to move up, the springs would get compressed and therefore put additional force on the piston. So now if we were to add heat, well, the temperature will go up because we're adding heat. The volume will go up because the piston will move up. And the pressure will go up because as the piston moves up, in addition to the weight of the piston, we have the increased force of the spring. So now pressure times volume increases Again, consistent with the ideal gas law. Instead of adding heat, we could take heat away from these three systems, or instead of compressing the gas, we could expand the gas. And then we have very similar behavior in the opposite direction. Let me just write that down. I won't go through the details, and you should check to make sure this is consistent with your thinking. So here are the four possibilities if we remove heat or we do an adiabatic expansion as opposed to compression and the behavior is the opposite of what we just showed. For the case of the springs, as the piston moves down, then the springs are exerting less force so the pressure decreases. When we look at the ideal gas law, we change the temperature. There's multiple ways that the pressure and volume can change.